All right, welcome back to Shane's DIY. In today's episode, I'm gonna show you how I made this desktop radio setup model. I'm sure you've seen a lot of these around. People make their own. I've seen some 3D printed ones, a lot of people selling them. I decided I wanted to make my own. This is a DIY channel. What I've been able to do with mine, because I wanted to be able to set up any possible scenario, is I actually put a separate servo on every single control surface, including the two elevators. Because uh, even though it's not a VTAIL, this is gonna let me simulate a VTAIL model with my uh, mixes uh, so I can make them move up and down individually. Now making your own isn't probably for everybody. If you want one of these there's plenty of them available you can buy, uh, get 3D printed plans you can download. Since I wanted to have a go at it plus I wanted it to look kind of cool so I picked this uh, P51 layout. I think it looks kind of cool. Uh, only thing else I may add to this I might put some uh, simulated landing gear on it so I can put the gear channel as well but uh, other than that, it's a very full-featured little desktop model. Let me show you how I put it together. Stick around. For do-it-yourselfers and makers like us, having a reliable partner to help take our projects to that next level is awesome. PCBWay is the partner you want. Of course, PCBWay makes custom printed circuit boards, but did you know they offer 3D printing services? 3D printing has made it possible to build amazing creations, and PCBWay makes it so easy. Take your STL or STEP files, send them to PCBWay, and in just a few short days, you'll get the parts delivered right to your doorstep. Click the link below and you'll get a $5 discount off your first order. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. I'm gonna do a time lapse of the uh, build, and I'll just kind of narrate a voiceover. A little, un a little different for me, but I'm gonna do a voiceover as I go. So I, uh, you can find a lot of uh, line art drawings for uh, different aircraft. I found this P51, so I printed it out, you know, in the scale that I wanted. Uh, I had to tape together some different pages so that I could uh, get it the right size with standard 8 by 11 paper. So then I've taped it together, and I'm cutting these all out so that I can overlay them on my uh, foam board. Got the foam board at Walmart is only 98 cents, so uh, very inexpensive. So I'm just going to trace that out. I'm doing two layers so that I can stack it up. I can make the airframe a little more stable, you know, it's not so flimsy. Because it is just thin foam board. And you just cut these out with an X-Acto knife. You just want to glue the layers together with some hot glue. And uh, one thing to keep a note here, uh, you know, and I, I got the glue overlaid a little bit where I was going to cut the ailerons and stuff in, so uh, in hindsight, it would avoid the, uh, the control surface areas a little better so that when I cut those out, they're not glued together. 
cut that slot out for the, the two wings so they slide in. Try to keep them as even as possible. Here's where I'm cutting the control surfaces out. And uh, I got some glue, you know, overlaying, you know, where the control surface was, so it made it a little more difficult, you know, on some of them to peel them apart. And when I put it back together, I'm only going to use one layer for the control surface rather than the two layers, just so it's easier to get the movement. And you want to cut a little uh, slant in the... Uh, edge where the hinge is going to go, you want to have a little slant in that so that it uh, can pivot. So a couple of notes on the uh, servos here. Um, I am putting the glue over the decal that's on these cheap servos and I come to find out later those decals kind of peel off when you if you need to move that so I would suggest peeling off those labels before you glue them to a surface you know if you're gonna do them like I did if you're gonna cut a hole out and then just bolt them in they work a little better but and here I've got some uh, little popsicle or craft sticks that I cut to a certain length and then I just drilled a small hole in them I'm gonna use those for my uh, control horns Unfortunately, my drill, that I, I couldn't find my Dremel at the time, so I had to do these with my fingers, and it wasn't too bad, but uh, I couldn't get these, that drill bit to tighten up in my bigger drill, so. Shell surfaces tightening those up. And uh, you'll see here in a minute, but one thing I didn't notice is uh, I wanted to use the flaps and the elevators on a Y, so I really realized that I needed to swap around a couple of the uh, servos, one for the elevator and one for the flap. So here I'm peeling that off and flipping it around because it didn't work right. I wanted to be able to use it on a Y for normal applications, but then if I wanted to separate them and put them on individual channels, then I could do that. But in, for you know most of the time, flaps are going to be running in parallel with uh, on a Y uh, as well as the uh, elevator. So I had to flip those around for so a nuisance. So I had, you can see I had to move that elevator servo to a different spot so that it would move the same orientation in the other making some uh, mounting feet for the thing. Uh, you don't see it here in this first one, but I just have one layer. I'm going to double up on that layer to give it some more strength, and then when I hot glue it on, it's uh, nice and secure and uh, stands nicely on the table. Now uh, this, for a prop, I, I didn't want to use a regular motor because it just sits on the table. I didn't want it to be dangerous. I didn't want it to go full speed. So what I did is I modified one of these cheap servos to be a 360-degree servo. And I uh, just glued my little uh, mini Draco prop to it. And uh, now I can try that to the throttle channel. And as I give the throttle, it just turns slowly. So you can just, I can simulate that prop action. I don't have to have actual motor and ESC uh, spinning the prop at full speed. So I just glue that on there. So here what I'm doing is uh, I'm making an adjustment. There's a little trimmer pot. There's videos on how to do this modification. I'm not going to get into detail here, but there's a little trimmer pot. So what I'm doing is setting the, uh, the throttle to minimum and the trim to center. And now I have to adjust this little trimmer pot with my screwdriver to get it to stop moving at that setting so that it's uh, got a neutral spot. And then uh, when I give it positive throttle, then it uh, turns in the forward direction. So I'm just zeroing that with that little trim pot. 
uh, bolted back together. Now we've got the prop action that's not going to cut my hand off when it's sitting on my desk. So, maybe kind of silly, but I thought it was kind of a cool little feature to have on there just to kind of show that as you do the throttle with the prop will speed up. Here I'm showing you the little trimmer pot in there. Normally the servo gear has a little rod that goes down through that pot and it moves as the servo moves and that's how it knows what position it's in. So part of the modification is you get rid of that so then it's always, the pot's always in the same spot. So it'll always stop moving whenever you put the stick in that position or the, the PWM symbol goes to that, that uh, value. Wise on my, my uh, flaps, I got wise on my uh, elevator, and then I can uh, get it all dialed in. So and you'll see this in a lot of future videos where I set up make, uh, model setups, mixes, and things like that. I can simulate just about any uh, model setup I can think of. I can put it together here. Uh, so this would be a pretty handy tool to have. Uh, thanks for watching.